All right. This is a little story yeah. called Frank's Mild Years. On a Friday, Frank's doctor came to visit and sat in the chair while Frank sat in bed. Then Susan the nurse and Jason the aide came and helped him, up, helped him up into his chair and he wheeled himself to the examination room down the hall where it was private. Frank came back an hour later and fell asleep sitting next to me, snoring all afternoon with my face about two feet from his weeping legs. They looked worse than ever, like they'd been smeared with egg yolks. They smelled closer to death than I did. Next Friday, the doctor was back. Tests came in, Frank, she said. So I'm good to go? Good to get out of this motherfucker? Go is the right word, Frank. The legs, they're killing you. Motherfucker. Motherfucker, you can't do that. No motherfucker's gonna touch my legs before they kiss the ruby red tattooed lips on my ass. The can of Diet Pepsi in his hands smashed against the wall nearby the doctor. She didn't say anything. She just left. On the way out, she smiled a sad smile at me where I lay rigid on my back. By the time I had managed to return what I thought might be a smile, she was long gone. After a bit, the staff came in and turned me on my left so that I was facing the door. Susan put water on my lips and then some Vaseline. She dialed in some Rachmaninoff on 10.20 a.m. and went to deal with Frank, which meant more pills. Get me up, he demanded. Bed rest, Frank. Doctor's orders. Fuck that crook. No way she's taking my kickers. I want a new doctor. You can talk with your case manager on Monday when he's back, Frank. For now, bed rest. Sorry. She wiped up the Diet Pepsi from the floor. I could hear Frank swallow the pills. Shut the door, he yelled. I want to get some fucking sleep. But instead, Frank got right to work. I heard the clatter of the bed rail going down against the frame. Heard him wince as he swung his dead legs around the side. Then he pushed off and I heard him hit the floor. I heard him moan, dragging himself to the chair. Then Frank wheeled around the curtain dividing the room and looked me in the eyes. I'm going back to the street, he said. I'll shit myself dead in this chair with a bottle of whiskey in my hand and a hooker in my lap before I let them take these legs. It's been good to know you, Dan. Take it easy. Frank put his hand on the knob and then rescinded it. Gotta unload first, he said. Frank made for the bathroom, which hadn't been used for months, except to rinse his bedside commode or shake out my sheets before sending them to the laundry. He shut the door behind him, and I heard it lock. I heard him grunt and swear. I heard the toilet seat, heard flesh hit it hard. I heard Frank's bone collide with linoleum. And then there was nothing. Time passed with the incredible durability of helplessness. I could see the call button on the end of a cord hanging from a hook on the wall by my bed. I'd never thought to use it before. It hadn't seemed to matter. My body tensed with every ticking second from the wall clock. My untrimmed fingernails dug deeper into my palms. Low rasps gurgled from my lungs and caught behind my clenched teeth. Dan, Dan, relax, buddy. Jason crouched down by my face. Hey, man, it's okay. You're okay. I'm sorry I'm late. Let me check you. He pulled back my sheets, and sure enough, they were full. I'm sorry, Dan. I'll get you changed, said Jason. He went for the closet between the bathroom and the hall door and got some washcloths and a towel and a fresh bottom sheet and a soft flannel incontinence pad. He set them down on the bed and I groaned. He got a pink plastic basin from under the room sink and ran water until it was warm. Jason filled it and put washcloths and baby shampoo in the basin. He got everything set up on a moving tray table between my bed and the curtains. Gloves, he said. The boxes of blue non-latex were in the bathroom. Jason tried the knob and it stopped. He looked down at me. Where's Frank? My arms ground around and I tried to stare the door open. Frank, Frank, you in there? Hey, Frank, you in there? Open the door. Jason went and looked behind the curtain. No Frank. He pounded on the door. Hey, Frank, answer me, Frank. He put his ear down near the knob. Answer me, Frank. He listened. Frank? We could both hear the moan. Shit, said Jason. Dan, I'll be right back. He covered my bare ass before he left. Less than a minute later, Susan was back, fumbling with a wad of keys. Frank, Frank, what are you doing? Susan was kneeling on the floor, ear to door. Unlock it, unlock the door. Frank moaned some more. She tried all the keys and tried them again. 
And Jason came back with a toolbox. There are no screws, he said. What do you mean, said Susan. Look at it, there's no screws. There's nothing on the hinges. I could see Jason digging at the knob, his elbows pincering, trying to work it open. Susan stood up. My knees are wet, she said. Frank, Frank. I could see orange and red all over her white pants. Frank slumped around and it sounded like he hit the door. He moaned, louder this time. I'm calling the fucking hospital, Susan said. And then Jason ran back in with a fire axe. He stopped for a moment and looked at me. I'm sorry, Dan. You don't want to see this. Then he pulled the privacy curtain all the way around the bed, but I could hear them pull Frank out and smell it. It all smelled familiar. After that, it was quiet again except for the low radio, which was playing Stravinsky now, just audible above the ticking clock. Two hours or so later, they came back and changed me and turned me on my right, so I was facing Frank's empty bed. Thank you.